hey guys. This upload is only going to be the safety gear that I've made to go around the bench grinder. When I originally uploaded how to sharpen knives surgically sharp, I just showed you how to sharpen on a belt grinder and then a buffing wheel. Now these concepts I think are fantastic, they're just a different concept from using an oil stone, a wet stone or any other stone. If it's what you prefer to do, you go for it. This is just another alternative and again I can't stress enough for those that said oh yeah but um, you, you're taking off too much uh, metal off your blade. All, all you got to do is remember press very lightly, okay? Once that side, once the other side, back and forth, probably twice on each side until you feel that burr, which I'll be showing uh, snippets of maybe during the course of this video. There you go. Press the right line. There you see that white line. That's the burr. That's the cutting edge. We need to take off. Again, don't have to push too hard. There it is. There you go. That's all you got to do. It, again, if, if you press too hard, you will make the metal go red or blue. Then you will stuff up a good knife. So again, I can't stress enough. If you are going to go down the line of one of these belt grinding concepts, Make sure you practice on cheap knives, dollar knives or whatever. Just press slightly until you see the bird. So this is just a step by step and if everybody likes it and uh, wants to know more about it, uh, maybe I'll do a uh, knife sharpening uh, segments uh, video, maybe start up a, another channel of actually sharpening up clients' knives, uh, especially the chefs and the restaurants, cafes. So away we go. Very important, which I didn't get back to, when the metal filings are going around, I went and bought these special magnets. Now these are 13 uh, pound pulling weight, and they're the uh, rare earth magnets, as you can see. So what I've done, whatever the vacuum system can't get hold of, as such, these little 
things, which I've got one here. I have another one placed underneath the suction valve here. So I've got one, two, and also another one over here on the buffing side because you get those little metal filings that come off when you uh, are polishing off the burr and this catches the rest. And just to prove that this works, I'll just when I take this off, you'll actually see Forgot, I've got a screw here, but we'll just undo that. As you can see that. And this took a, a lot of thought to make this box up because uh, nothing is bought off the shelf. And as you can see, look where the magnets are. And you can see I have when moved that. And now I'm going to just pull that rare earth magnet up. Now look at that. It just shows you that it works. So then when I need to get rid of this, I just get hold of the vacuum, which is just here, ready to go. And press that, and there, watch how this stuff is just here. Now there's the lump of that metal filing from the belt, grinding belt. Just look how that goes. It just shows you whatever this stuff you pick up, the vacuum cleaner, the rare earth magnet will trap it to the metal and when I change the belt, I just suck them all out, just like this. And as you can see the back of the board, this is what I used to have to put up with before when I was working in the workshop. And you can just imagine all that metal particles and buffing wheel compounds going in my van. It was choking me. <laughs> so that's why I had to come up with this system. And it does I also work. made up this system here. This just shows you, again with a 16 gauge, I water up side plates. I put a little locking device in the back here. And with this hinge that you normally use in a door latch, the way I made it, I just lift that up and it automatically locks in. Okay, and then with the base plate, this is for the buffing side. compound and just rub that through there now I will put the vacuum system on you saw how you just see how things are flying up here now put the vacuum system on it's going to get noisy can't apologize about the noise that's the way it's going to be but it's going to stop all these fibers flying around so I'm going to stick the vacuum on now open up the valve at the back here Compound. And you can see that, how it's all getting sucked in. Look at that. Alright, it's a lot, lot better. It's catching at least 70-80% of those fibres that normally would have gone around and into my face. And that's why I've got this slip on here too. Alright, so the bear was on that side. That is the side I'm going to start on. So I'm going to polish this. cutting compound on the other side. There you 
can see it coming out. Again, you gotta just push it enough so it pops up. Pretty quick. Keep that knife blade pretty straight. Just follow the contours of the blade. Now again, these aren't real gear knives. They're only worth like $20, $30. But when you do, uh, just for ages sake, nice German knives, Woodstock or Japanese, uh, ones where they're valued up to, especially Damascus, up to $300, $500. I will be showing you some photos of the knives that I do sharpen. Uh, you've got to make sure you do it right. And again, I don't overheat the blade. I don't. Just temper it. You just you've got to use common sense. Like I said, practice on cheap knives. And this system is works good for me. Because I'll do up the anything to 15 or 10 to 15 knives an hour on my knife sharpening business. And as you can see, there's a nice shine coming from that polish. And in my opinion, when you polish back, then there's less resistance when you're cutting. So what I'm going to do now is just turn this off. That sounds a lot better. Again, these magnets, if they're placed at the back, which I forgot to do here. Uh, sorry, it actually goes on the bottom of this one. Grabs all those metal filings that the vacuum cleaner can't grab. And as you saw before, it does work. Now, uh, you can use a strop. I've made my own leather strop. Now, here we call it Vegetan. And as you see, uh, just to get that extra sort of polish on it or egg, egg, extra edge, you don't have to do it because as I'll do a knife test, there's some A4 paper, computer printing paper. Now what I do, I mean, you can slice off this and go like, like this. Oh yeah, that's sharp. But I reckon when they're really sharp, you should be able to just push down and curve around. And let's see how we go. Anybody could just get the knife and go like that. That's sharp. But pushing down and then curving it. Okay, just to get the extra, extra sort of sharpness, if you've made yourself a strop or you bought yourself one. I don't sort of put too much uh, cutting compound on here, some people do. I just use the natural compound that's actually on there and that's just got dark over time. Uh, when you do want to clean that, I think it's a bit of methylated spirits and then rub some machine oil on the leather, stop it from drying out. And I'll just pass it a few times like that. Make sure you lift it up. If not, you'll cut it like I have done here. So it's very important just to stroke it as such. And let's do the cutting test now. Again, I'll just push down and try and curve it around to the bottom. straight down. And I'll grab the other side because it's getting hard to hold the paper. Beautiful. It just gives that little bit extra cutting edge as Murray Carter would explain in his videos. Especially when you're sharpening up cut right razors. Now you see this cutting compound? I'm going to show you a trick that I learned a long time ago when I was um, learning to be monuments on graves and we did the headstones, we used to put the gold lettering into the headstones. So once I put the gold leaf in, you had to cut it back. Good old fashioned cuttlefish. Get it on any beach. That uh, material that it's made from, this, this light bone, won't scratch a thing. Won't scratch granite, won't scratch stainless steel. So you've got a good knife and you want to get that off without using chemicals like um, 
uh, methylate or acetone or whatever you want to do to get this cutting compound off to show you how easy it is as, as you can see it here let's just get that part of the cuttlefish and I'll just go like that okay that easy who would ever show you that little tip again all that cutting compound it's down there I just place the edge working away as such as you can see the cutting compound that's the back of the uh, cuttlefish it's completely gone no chemicals whatsoever and you will not scratch a highly polished stainless steel blade it will not scratch and that's a tip that I learnt when we do monuments on the grave. Now again, safety reason, place the blade away. Just want to polish that a bit. That's all I've done. There you go. Nice, highly polished. And again, just press down lightly. Beautiful.